Welcome to The Corona Shift, the podcast that explores the changing landscape of Canadian performance art during the coronavirus outbreak. The world is but a stage? Not anymore, sucker. Your you butt's not... <laughs> Sorry. We're cancelled. We're closed. Each week I chat with a different guest about their experiences in isolation and how they're adapting to the transition from the stage to the online world. Ah, uh, this is going to be a great show. We'll have comedians, drag artists, uh, magicians, burlesque performers, um, strippers. That's right. We're the, we're the only podcast in the world that has strippers. Join us each week until this whole crazy pandemic is over, because I know you're locked up and you've got nothing better to do. And neither do I, really. That's why I'm doing this. I mean, I'm bored. It's been... It's been weeks since I've been outside. Somebody help me. Welcome to the Corona Shift on WACAB, All Cops Are Bastards Radio. I'm Alice Rose, and this is my public access radio voice. Just kidding. Let's check out what's happening this week. If you're listening to this podcast right away, make sure to check out Joke Shop tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Ashwin Singh is hosting a lineup of amazing comedians who will be performing and workshopping their material right in front of your eyes. Uh, This is my favorite show to watch naked, and we're doing it online for the second time. The first time was with Comedy Bar. This time it's going to be super interactive. Uh, We're going to have a little chat window and it's happening on uh, twitch tv so tune in to see how the microphone being mimed as a sausage is made on twitch.tv slash comic sans prod joke shop is a positive and constructive space for bipoc performers Next Thursday, July 22nd, we'll be putting on a very special edition of Comic Sans that we're calling This One's for Marsha. We have an all-star lineup of strong women of color coming together to celebrate the iconic Marsha P. Johnson. All month, we've been profiling influential black trans women on our Instagram page. Women like Lucy Hicks Anderson, who's a trans woman born in the 1880s. This story just amazes me, and I'm trying to tell it as much as possible. Lucy, dream girl, she was an award-winning chef and socialite. She took advantage of her social status to run an underground brothel and speakeasy during Prohibition. Badass, right? She was arrested once, but the head banker of her town bailed her out almost immediately because she was supposed to cater one of his fancy dinner parties that night. Lucy Hicks Anderson was married twice and remained stealth almost her entire life. Uh, For those of you who don't know uh, trans women, until recently, uh, the only way to survive was to live stealth. So not let anyone know that you're trans. Yeah, so Lucy remained stealth almost her entire life until an outbreak of venereal disease in the Navy was traced back to her underground brothel. Uh, when that happened, the local, the local doctor made everyone who worked in the brothel, including Lucy, come in for a VD exam. And then once he saw what he saw, he outed her to the whole damn town because of course he did. But that shit didn't even phase Lucy. When she went to court to fight some bogus charges over this, like falsifying information on her marriage certificate and her business license, because she used her name, um, she became the very first trans woman, let alone black trans woman, to defend her gender identity in a court of justice. (sighs) So yeah, check out Comic Sans on July 22nd. All proceeds for the show will be donated to the Homeless Black Trans Women Fund and the Black Trans Protesters Emergency Fund. You can support these causes in a couple of ways. First, by purchasing a ticket to the show. Although if you don't want to buy a ticket, it's okay. You can still watch the show for free. By making a donation on our website or donating to these charities directly. There are links on our website and all of our social media to both of those charities. So if you wanted to donate to one more than the other, or I don't know, you have no idea who I am, and you don't trust strangers on the internet with your money. You do you, boo. 
Okay, on with the show, I promise. I promise we're going to get to the show. Uh, This week, I had a chat with my good friend and travel buddy, Mike Payne, about virtual shows, new projects, and how to get by when you're locked inside for a couple months. This episode's going to be a bit different because Mike and I spend a lot of time in cars going to shows. Sorry, in his car going to shows because I'm a Toronto queer. I don't have a car. Please. Um, yeah, so we just we just chat a lot. So this was just kind of an organic conversation. Uh, it was really fun, but we did talk about a lot of cool things. If you don't know Mike Payne, check him out. He's a local club favorite. He's a rock star Toronto producer. He's behind. Uh, he was the creator of Comedy Appetizer, and he's one of the people behind And a Scotch Egg, which you can find on YouTube as well. And remember, if you're listening to the audio version of this show, you can actually find this episode with video on our YouTube channel. So Mike and I had a chat through Zoom. All of that footage is attached to the podcast on YouTube. So make sure to check out Comic Sans, follow our channel, do all of those great things. Uh, All right, on with the show. Welcome to the Corona Shift, the only podcast where all the rules are made up and the points don't matter. That's not right. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Uh, I am your host, Alice Rose. I'm here today talking to a uh, Toronto comedian, very good friend, Mike Payne. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about fun, quirky uh, hobbies and creative projects people have picked up in the quarantine and uh, how it affects our lives as performers. Um, how are you, Mike? How are you doing? I'm actually really good. Yeah, I've had uh, an interesting week, um, as we've discussed previously. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, ultimately, I'm very good at the moment, um, feeling kind of energized and, and I've had my creative creative juices refreshed recently. I think some of that has to do with getting back to work for the past couple of weeks, too. That's super cool. Super, Day super cool. Lives. What do you do day job wise? I'm a house painter. Yeah, I do inside and out. I can do uh, high stuff, low stuff, um, you know, walls, trim, casings, etc. cetera. Um, done it, you know, on and off for probably about 10 years. Um, just got back into it when I started doing, um, when I started doing comedy because it was, uh, it was a little bit like a regular, regular paycheck because before that I was a designer and it was kind of all over the place and timing was less predictable. Mm-hmm. And so it's, yeah, it's a nine to five every day kind of deal. And it pays yeah. enough to pay for, you know, the road machine. Yeah. The car, the road. Yes. <laughs> the gig buggy, the gig buggy, which has gotten, gotten us to lots of, lots of places. Yeah. Super happy for that. Yeah. Um, so you're back to work now, right? Yeah, I've been you back were... for, yeah, three weeks, actually. It's about three, three weeks. weeks. Yeah. yeah. Other than I took a couple of days off last week, but yeah, it's been great. Uh, the mm-hmm. physical activity too really helps just emotionally and yeah, nothing's as, nothing's as dire. Yeah. Yeah. Exercising. I know that I, uh, I was just getting onto a good exercise routine and like eating healthier and stuff like that. And then I decided to hit my midlife crisis. And uh, oh, it's, it's the middle of, of your life. Yes, Hello. <laughs> took one of uh, one of my partner's skateboards, her longboard, out uh, down Parkside, and didn't know how to stop it yet because it was my first time on a longboard, and I smashed up my right leg. How is it now? It's, it's been like a week or so. Yeah, it's been a week or so. I have an appointment. I have a doctor's appointment today to get confirmed whether like I can continue walking on it and stuff like that, or if I should go in for more stuff. There's nothing broken, nothing fractured, but um, worried about tendons and ligaments. Yeah, yeah, and just the way it's bruising and swelling. So I hit my knee, and right now, like my ankle, almost to the underside of my foot is starting to bruise and swell. So like that bruise has moved all the way down my leg. Uh, It's so gross. So super weird. So for the past like a week and a half, I've been housebound again. And yeah, it's hard. It's hard just not moving, not doing something. Like I get this pent up energy, but also this lack of momentum. 
Right. Yeah. It, it all builds together too. Like when we, you and I were going to be doing a project a little while ago, like we got to the point of, of filming some stuff even. And it, like I got hit with that crazy lethargic paralytic depression, you know? Oh and God. Yeah. It's like shut it all down for a little bit. And I was lucky. I, I had uh, my new partner here and, and they were really, um, really supportive and uh kind of took care of me for a few days when i when i needed it it's always good like i hope everybody has that in their lives because you know at some point something's going to happen and it's going to screw you up um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah grateful yeah, for that. that's unfortunate i know that Happens. uh it's so frustrated because i was uh, i was excited to work on that project and yeah me I too the way it was going but Fuck well, it doesn't it have just... to be dead either. Like we can. No, we can... it doesn't. I'd, yeah. I'd love to continue on with it, but it's just. Sure. It seems like we both hit this this brick wall of like. We can figure it out too, because there's there's like there's mood, and then there's also like, well, what part of it is deterring me too, right? Mm -hmm. really looking at that, I think that might be worth doing off air. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, let's table that for, for an actual discussion. Um, so you've been, see, so we're out of work for a couple of months then. I was, yeah. And I still haven't done stand up. I don't consider Zoom shows really stand up. Um, it's a different thing, right? It's a, I've done a hand, a couple handfuls of them at this point, and some of them are good and most of them are really rough, yeah. uh, depending on how they're set up. But yeah, it, I miss doing real stand up really badly i've had a couple instances lately though where certain things have kind of replicated that high or that that experience of, of making people laugh like uncontrollably you know um like playing video games with my pals um from the states and just running my mouth you know like just like turning off the brain and letting the mouth do the work mm -hmm. and that was fantastic and i did that yesterday and i just i feel amazing today um but there's also this show called The Workshop uh, by Scott Porteous. Big shout out to Scott for putting it on. It runs every day of the week. And it's, um, it's an assigned writing workshop. So he, the producer um, asks the comic to pick a number between, between 1 and 10. And there's an assigned topic attached to it. So the first time I did it, it was Medieval Times. And so mm -hmm. I did five minutes of material on medieval times. I went into like the historical stuff, like the flights of fantasy wizard stuff, but also I kept saying medieval times, dinner and tournament, you know, like con continually through the whole thing. It was a really fun experience. And it was like the first time in a while that I felt like a real comic as well. Yeah. Uh, and he follows it with letting you do five minutes of whatever you've been working on lately, you know, no judgment. And there's a panel of comics with the, that are doing the same thing and we all just pick it apart and uh, and tag it up kind of like joke marmalade similar to joke marmalade mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'll have to check that out that sounds really, really uh, interesting. i will be running mondays coming up Ooh, very soon. hey yeah. uh yeah i have to get that writing bug back uh yeah well but... if you do want on just reach out to scott he does all the booking and it's it's mm. he's really really fair he just goes down the list basically he just adds your name to the list and goes down literally goes down the list cool mm. super super cool um, have you heard Kelsey Ryan's joke about medieval times? No. No? Um, maybe, maybe, but I don't remember. With the, oh, uh, it was something about female falconers. No, I don't know. No, it's all. great. It's great. You female have to hear Female falconers. It. Female yeah. falconers. So They're like talons in their arms, just holding the bird up. <laughs> um, but I guess. They just seem so mad all the time because they're always flipping the bird. No, <laughs> That was that was dumb. That was terrible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the fact that, that Medieval Times tries to maintain a historical accuracy, so um okay. to a degree, so um that they're not allowed to like females aren't allowed to be the falconer. And Kelsey's like, I wouldn't be upset about this, but there are literally no zero other falconer jobs available. <laughs> wow. So it was just her setup was really good. I'm not doing it justice, of course. Because but what if you're non-binary? I mean, like, do you slip through the cracks? Uh if you're non-binary, they uh you you disappear just as you walk in the door because you don't Oh my god, you stuff. poof. Oh yeah. my god. Well, yeah. it's better than what they used to do. Yeah build the fire but build here we fire. are yeah 
Um, I'm in a cheery mood today, and I keep throwing in these little bombs of like, <laughs> sad. <laughs> Here you go. We're doing great. Sad. Kill the mood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Funny. Like, um, oh, what's his name? He did the the series of Netflix shows. The English guy. Repertoire. Um. I don't know. Can't think of his name. Anyway, that's a that's a Google. Yeah. What's the show called? Repertoire. Repertoire. Let's see TV show. James Acaster. Oh yeah, the comedian. Yeah. 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 He has this bit about breaking the ice, icebreakers in conversations. Where like you open up the conversation, but you should kill it when you leave, because like you open up the conversation and then anyone can join just in. Just irresponsible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so really should, good. Yeah, I so like you should that. kill it with like you end a conversation with like there are only seventy two tigers left in the wild, and then just walk away. <laughs> yeah, <I think> <laughs> seventy two tigers left in the wild. <laughs> think about that the next time you buy a scone. Yeah. <laughs> But I love really? that idea of killing a conversation, like a conversation starter and a conversation finisher. Yeah, but and, I think it would be like a, a murderer of a conversation. Mm -hmm. you know, like, I think you, it should be a role, like a, like a, you know, comedians in their off time, conversation murderer. You yeah. know, you see the guy enter the room, you're like, I kind of think I know what that guy is. Not quite certain. And then they, they come into the middle as you leave and they're like, yes, by the way, you're all stupid. Bye bye, <laughs> and he disappears into the night. <laughs> oh, uh, I love oh, I love so that. I shot the couch last week. Oh yeah, I leaned over to my new partner, and I, I, I said, "Hey, guess what?" And In front gonna, of oh no, and I was gonna squeeze a fart out because you're that comfortable already. We're crude. Yeah, we're like yeah. Of there. course you are. Of course. And yeah. yeah, come on. You have to be with me. Give me a break. <laughs> um, and then uh, I liquish it like all over the couch. Oh, no. And I ran to the, I'm exaggerating. It was like a little bit, but there <laughs> was on the couch. Ran to the bathroom. Fuck, like <laughs> white as a ghost. Sit on the <laughs> toilet. Look at the couch. And I've never seen anybody make no noise while being beat red. Like, <laughs> like like losing their mind laughing <laughs> and then she went she she white as well like ghost white and uh she sat up for a second and i said oh what's wrong and, and, and she's like no oh, i almost passed out i'm like i saw stars they were coming along the sides of my eyes <laughs> <laughs> so bizarre yeah so i almost i almost made uh my partner pass out <laughs> made her old school yeah. faint I yeah. love that. Did you get the did you get the shit stain out? Oh yeah. Immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta take care of that right away. As I look at the spot where <laughs> it would be. Uh anyway, that was a lovely overshare, wasn't it? Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. My my couch, um my old couch I used to have. Oh I don't know if Trisha can hear this. She doesn't listen to the podcast. It's all right. What's up? I just remembered why I mentioned it to begin with. I lost my oh. train of thought for a second. It, it was because I think that, you know, when it's in such quantity, it's not really diarrhea anymore. And it needs a pluralized, like a flock name. So I came up with a trauma of diarrhea. A trauma of diarrhea. <laughs> a trauma of diarrhea. A murder of crows. Never mind that. I a had trauma. a trauma of diarrhea in my house. <laughs> uh... Oh my God. Shitting the couch is no a, is a thing. It is. It, it is. It is definitely. If you haven't it, done it, you will. Like it just. It's. I think it's one of those things. You know, it it, mm -hmm. it earmarks the true middle of your life. So, like, maybe I'll be eighty. That's what. That's what'll happen. Or just people. I'll be seventy-eight because I'm at thirty-nine now. Yes. There you go. That's, that's my cutoff because I shat the bed or shat the couch. Shat the couch at thirty-nine. Shat the bed. Do you remember? <laughs> have you have you ever pissed the bed in adulthood? Wait, what? Piss the bed in your adulthood? No, no, I never no? have. No, I wasn't a wetter anyway. No, I wasn't I either, really but it happened once I was like 25, 26. Oh, really? Was it after drinking? 
No. It was just like a regular. It was well, like fine. a Wednesday. It was a work day. And <laughs> I think I was just overtired because I was working two jobs at the, at the time. Yeah. Who am I kidding? I'm always working two jobs. But, um, yeah. you know, that was, I just started working and they were both kind of, there was. You were in uh, that phase of the burnout? There was a labor job and a customer service job. So it was yeah, tough. That's... You and think that would work, but it doesn't. No, because no. it's it's a holistic exhaustion. Right. It's like you get your social exhaustion and you get your physical exhaustion and then you get your emotional exhaustion. Mm. Oh, well. Um, yeah, we're not doing a podcast at all. We're just chatting, but I like it. This is good. <laughs> that's what podcasts were. Yeah, it's really lovely. Isn't that what they are? I think, yeah, I just, I try to have a theme, but whatever i'm sorry um, i've taken us off course no i really like it and What's I always the next question you. on your sheet like we had we had half an hour of conversation just before this podcast oh yeah <laughs> we could have recorded and put out as a podcast so yeah for I sure next time i call just start recording and we'll do whatever and then we'll edit out what we don't want yeah 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 that, that would work um yeah i wanted to talk about your career right now because you're um you're a comedian who's at a certain level and um and like you said you haven't been doing stand up and and zoom shows are different so i'd like to talk about that a little bit like sure what do you what's different about zoom shows um well first of all they're brand new so they're being run in a variety of manners you know the only similarity is the software in some cases mm -hmm. um so people are trying to run it like it's a regular stand-up show which is kind of what i did the last time that i hosted one mm -hmm. and that doesn't really work because when people come into the room um like at, at seven o'clock when the show is supposed to start uh they need to be directed so basically um, I think that a proper host for a Zoom show is really an usher as well. Just like teaching, oh, yeah, here the the thing is in the corner uh, that you click so that you can speak now. And we want your volume on so that we can hear your laughs and or whatever directives you have. You have to spend a lot of time doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but also having a, a graphic that's up where you're sharing the screen when they enter so they can read instructions as to what to do and what not to do some ground rules. That also really helps, too. But yeah, just in general, it isn't the same thing. It's a different medium. It's it's video comedy. It's it's live video comedy. Like it's not stand up comedy. Mm -hmm. Some people are choosing to mm -hmm. stand up when they're delivering it because I think Which they're helps. trying to bring themselves back, and that's fine. Yeah, yeah. But it's still not yeah. the same thing. No, it's really not. And I think it should be approached in a different way too. Like we should be doing yeah. something different because I know we're trying to replicate the experience that we've had, but this can be very rewarding if we like embrace that it is different and how is it different and how are we going to do it differently? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it mean the structure of your jokes needs to be different? It does. And it can be more writing intensive as opposed to performing intensive because as a stand-up comedian, you write material and that writing process is very short. Right. And then the revision process is extensive over performance and open mic and all of these. Whatever things. your method so, is. Yeah. There, yeah, there is uh, quite yeah. a bit of revision universally. Yeah, but I think especially because when I do, when I've done the couple Zoom shows that I've done, I will put my notes up and I will be trying out new material almost every time because... Yeah, that I have been too. Yeah, because you can get away with having your notes up. You can get away with having a, a document on your screen. You can get yeah. away with having all of those resources so that you're focusing on the structure of the jokes. Um right. But also, I just, you don't have the, the audience interaction and the engagement in such a way. Um, there's something lacking. It almost has to lean a little more towards sketch, a little more towards um, just that element of something that, that is more prepared and structured. I've seen some approaches, like Al Val's been doing a more conver conversational approach to it like mm -hmm. yeah their method is is it's working very well in these shows but al's like an amazing talent yeah um yeah but it's the the method is different like it doesn't look like the same al val like it doesn't have it doesn't have the same structure because i know 
their older material very, very well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they seem to be like, if, if the audience is listening, go watch Al Val perform at one of these things because uh, they're doing it right to a certain extent, you know, yes. as far as we can, really. Yeah. Yeah, then I've and, seen some uh, of the celebrity Zoom shows and stuff like that. And, they, and they're just as bad as a lot of the other ones, too. Like these mm -hmm. big celebrity comedians. And they're not, they're, oh, they're my favorite comedian. Well, they're not your favorite comedian right now. Like watching yeah. that in yeah. a lot of cases. And it's not <laughs> criticism. It's just, it's the reality of the now. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Have you taken on any other projects or any other things that, uh, that aren't stand up that are kind of supplementing your creative um, mind? Well, I, I, I've got a podcast with Ryan Sim. We've only put out one episode so far and we're kind of just, we don't know where, where our, our footing is yet on it. It's called the ginger beard men. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's on his YouTube channel right now. I'll be adding it to mine later. Uh, but for now it's on his. So yeah, uh, follow uh, Ryan Sim on the comedian Ryan Sim on uh, YouTube. I don't have his, his link ready. But yeah, I'll, I'll post his link with later. the podcast. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so you can watch that. Uh, aside from that, like comedy related, I am hosting. Uh, it's called The Workshop. I'll be hosting it on Mondays um, going forward. It's a seven day a week uh, workshop for comedy with an assigned topic. It's really, really fun. And audience members get to comment on the Facebook stream and we actually read it loud live. Uh, and we take it in because you're criticizing our work as well. It's not like, oh, it's bad. It's no, it's you're trying to add tags to, okay, the, yeah. to the work itself. Yeah. So it's an, it, it might be a, a unique opportunity for some people at home because they've never written comedy or, or had contrib contributed to a project. So it's interesting. Because like for me, uh, I've taken, there's been a bunch of punchlines in my jokes that were like augmented or, or lean or confirmed obviously by audience members. Like, mm -hmm. um, in my superpower joke, uh, I talk about, uh, how, uh, Peter, Bar Peter Parker was bitten by a radio, radioactive spider became Tobey Maguire. The Tobey mm -hmm. Maguire part was directly from an audience member at one point. So it's, oh, it's in... Yeah, it's in that vein. I was doing uh, Absolute Kingston, and someone yeah. like you guys know this thing, and then he's like, "Yeah, Tobey Maguire." I was like, "Oh my god, that's great!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it doesn't mean that audience members should heckle when they're being heard, of course. But uh, right, you can ask right. the question. Sometimes it can be very, very rewarding. Anyway, that show is called The Workshop and uh, can be found on Facebook right now. It's a Facebook live event thing. So it's Monday to Monday, Monday to Sunday uh, with various hosts, mainly Scott Porteous, but I'm one of the guests. One of the guests. Yay. Yeah. But I'd love it if people followed me on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. I don't post a whole hell of a lot right now because I'm finding it a little bit taxing. But uh, yeah, at Mike Payne Comedy. Mm -hmm. on those three things and if you want to follow me on youtube i don't have a hell of a lot up there but it'd be great if you did uh it's uh it's mike Payne toronto yeah yeah that's what i got we're gonna get more up we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna do some sketches and oh and yeah segments yeah we'll like revisit that. our project that we started a little while ago for sure yeah i, I, I think yeah. That there's a lot of work that went into what we did so far so we'll, we'll continue it too mm-hmm mm -hmm. um so obviously I think one of the things I'm fascinated with right now is seeing how comedians are adapting because we are really resilient, uh, you know, self-propelled people. Um, and I'm really interested in how comedians are adapting to the sort of new normal of uh, not having a stage or a venue and still wanting to create and produce and do all of those, all of those things. Mm -hmm. So people are doing like cool zoom rooms, like uh, the workshop sounds like something that can um, ultimately replace an open mic eventually. Yeah. But it's more interactive than an open mic even like yeah. everyone, everyone's tagging it. All the comedians on the panel are tagging it. And, and that's, it's amazing. Um, and you create it, it has more of a sense of community involved with it than live stand up shows from my experience. Mm -hmm. or live mm -hmm. open mics, I should say specifically live open mics. Yeah. 
Do you think do you think there's an opportunity to continue a lot of these efforts, you know, when things I hate saying go back to normal, but like when things do start to open up because things are opening up soon they're starting to come back. Yeah, kind of freakily fast, right? I mean, yeah. it, it seems like a bad move maybe potentially. Oh, definitely too fast. We're putting economy over people for sure. Yeah, people will die and that sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um Oh, sorry, what was the question again? Yeah, do you think there's a merit to to continuing these things, these virtual shows, and continuing what we're doing once once things start back up? Like, are we learning anything from this? I think some of the uh, yeah, I think some new formats will probably be adapted going forward. But ultimately, we're all stand ups, and unless you started in this, like unless you're starting doing comedy in this thing, which I haven't seen anybody yet. I on any of the shows that I've done, but I'm sure things, there are yeah. people out there. I mean, if we can think of it, it probably exists, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, uh, I think that some of it will carry over, but it will be like considered like a second class thing compared to to live comedy. Like if you're on a it, book shows, will always overrule it. But they, I mean, that being said, they are they already overrule open mics anyway. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. And I mean live stand-up comedians have a have a sour taste for like youtube comics and i don't know why i, I don't like watch yeah. them i don't know what they do really <laughs> uh, well, it's, I, not, it's not malicious it's just a reality right what were you gonna mm-hmm. say i i just think it's something that more comedians should be jumping on because like being funny is the hard part but that but and it's like, like the writing, flavor of funny or writing in that way i think is different once again, I haven't seen them though, so I'd have right. to watch to comment. It is on it. different, but I mean, embrace every platform that you can. Just like TikTok, I think like how many there are a few stand-up comedians who are doing TikTok very well, right? And I I definitely appreciate that because that's that's reaching out, and it's not it's not doing your stand-up and promoting your stand-up on a social media platform, but it is promoting your brand. Right, and it's promoting your audience, and it's it's for it's, sure. It's keeping people interested. Reach. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Cliff Knight does incredible things on TikTok. Yeah, Cliff's a really great guy. He's and, yeah, uh, it, a lot of that's really funny. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've watched quite a bit of it. Yeah, it's like the medium was meant for him. Kind of. Yeah, I feel like, <laughs> like he's finding his footing there. Yeah. 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 It's great. It's great. And that's really cool because like he works hard, man. That guy, that guy, that guy totally works hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a hustler, but it's going to pay off because when, uh, when his name's on a poster, people are going to come out to see the guy from TikTok, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was like that with YouTube. Have you ever been on a show with a YouTuber booked? Uh, yes, I have. I, uh, Ian Lynch, shout out to Ian Lynch. Really great guy. Um, He he works at Edge 102. He's one of the DJs there, or what do they call them? Like on-air personality, whatever you want to call it. Um, he's one of the guys there, and he used to put on this Sunday show call or show on Sunday called After Dark at mm-hmm. a bar called After Dark. Uh, I think it was owned by his brother. But he used to pack that place out, and I was like, how are you packing this place out on a Sunday night? You know, it's a nice spot, but it doesn't matter. Sunday shows are generally just like for working on material half the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, his thing is he stacked the lineup with half local Toronto comedians and half local Toronto YouTube com- uh, com- uh, comedians. Mm-hmm. And uh, it worked out really well. It just did like butts and seats. I mean, I didn't think that their their form of comedy translated as well to the stage. Right. That's because it's made for video. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just like stand-up comedy doesn't, translate very well to video unless it's like a special with an audience there right like uh, obviously that's where we all start to ingest it originally i mean i'm never going to put another self-tape up on youtube (laughs) those are it just doesn't translate at all at all at all yeah um so as a comedian who's currently out of work in comedy um (laughs) I I always like to ask everybody, is there anything that your audiences can do to support you right now? And it doesn't have to be like, go find me, but... Um, I'm doing okay in general in terms of, of that stuff. Um, 
I would love it for people who don't normally like who are like fans who only go to live shows to start watching the online ones because it's what's available right now and it does need viewership. There have mm -hmm. been a bunch of shows that had very few viewers that I've been on, but then there's other shows that are, you know, there's 200 people and mm -hmm. that's, that's a, that's a pretty, there's nothing in between. So yeah. it would be great to yeah. see people actually uh, trying it out, even though it may not be fantastic yet. It's a new form that is, is just being generated. And I'm sure that YouTube comedians are really good at it already because it's very akin to what they already do. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the rest of us, we're trying something new. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Why do you think that is? What do you think? How long did it take before you were getting re laughs regularly? Like that's when you true. started doing, like how that's long, true. you know, before you could have a pretty consistent um set on the regular it takes it takes a while like it does it takes a yeah. while yeah i'd say the first um, year well i think you it know. takes longer for some i remember a friend of mine told me that he didn't get last for three years like he really wasn't he was trying and it just didn't click for him until three years in mm -hmm. uh, and now he works for second city you know like yeah yeah just it's different different strokes for different folks mm-hmm mm. No, I was I was wondering more like the the polarization of audiences. Why like some shows can get two hundred audience members and other shows only get a few. I, think I it guess it has so to do many. with what it's attached to as well. Like the biggest one I did was attached to a charity, and they they invited all their donors, right? So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're they have their own audience that they're supplying, and we had a headliner who was more prominent at the time too. So it just adds up. It's just the different pieces. It's pretty much the same as, as we were doing comedy here anyway. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if people watching right now are from Toronto, but if you've been to an indie show in Toronto, there's a good chance that it doesn't have a huge turnout. Um, but we are very grateful for the people who do make it out <laughs> mm -hmm. to those ones as well, because, mm -hmm. we, you know, we're trying to live our dream here. Yeah. Support your comedians. Mm. And... Yeah. And uh, just follow me on the social media stuff. That's how you can support me. Like, yeah. Do that. And, and maybe like on Twitter, even though I have 600 people on there, maybe like a damn thing that I post every once in a while. <laughs> oh, I'm so frustrated <laughs> with Twitter. I'm old. I think that's what it is. I'm too old to learn how to Twitter properly. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's becoming increasingly competitive as well. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Twitter has... Like you, it's Falling so funny, uh, you know, I'll say a joke that I think is, is like, sounds like another dude's joke to a certain, not their joke itself, but sounds like it was written in the same way online as this other person. Yeah. It's like yeah. tons of likes and has less people following them. And I'm like, why? What the shit, man? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't get it. Twitter's really fallen through the cracks with me. It's, uh, for me, it's more uh, a diary of, of one-liners or like premises where I can tweet it out and then when it comes back to like really putting out another set, then I have this like catalog of notes almost to go right. through. Yeah. But um Yeah, I've, yeah, I've a written of... a fair amount of like one linery jokes on there. Some of it makes it in. Like you fold it in as the punchline essentially. Yeah. Or yeah. Something bigger. I think uh my very first joke that uh grinder is like pokemon go but with dicks that was uh <laughs> yeah. that was something i tweeted like four years ago <laughs> is it really yeah yeah what was my first one let me pull and it up it just ended up the first jokey one on here so I, I had a podcast years ago for um video games mm -hmm. so i i think that's partly why people don't like my jokey stuff because it's it's my original audience Versus the new audience. Oh, yeah. That's probably part of it. But yeah. Uh, let's see here. Go back in time. Profile. It's probably something really gross. It's like, I think most of us, <laughs> most of us start with the gross first. And then learn oh, to yeah. temper learn to temper it a little bit or just make it funnier rather than just gross. 
Oh my God, this is taking forever. All right, this is like, let's edit this out, this part. Okay, anyway, I'm not going back any further. <laughs> Therapy is the new sports. Everybody's into it. <laughs> oh my God. Stupid. It's so dumb. Uh, my first. Anyone else just experienced wearing a large size t shirt for the first time in years? Feels as good as cleaning my ears while taking that first pee of the day. <laughs> These are bad. That's why no one's liking them. I figured it out. I figured it out. These are just shit. Anyway, do you have any more questions? Um, I'm just looking back. Sorry, I'm getting distracted now looking back through my old Twitter and it's just Ugh. not a lot of funny there. Um, no, it's terrible. Yeah. Well, mine's terrible. All right. So two months in, you said you wanted to talk about uh, fun hobbies and stuff. And oh, fun, silly hobbies? Fun, silly or silly, hobbies. silly interests? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like uh, before this whole thing went down, I was not a sports. And now I'm a sports. Um, I w did not watch anything except for the odd baseball game because I played it when I was a kid and it was nostalgic. And now I watch World's Strongest Man, arm wrestling, like rock climbing ufc i bought fight pass even i watched so much ufc it's ridiculous mm -hmm. there's tons of brazilian jiu-jitsu videos online the gracies etc the gracies 10th planet machado blah 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 it's crazy i don't understand w how this was unlocked by by the pandemic at all i don't get it oh and i watch a ton of like cooking stuff on this is all on youtube you youtube has swallowed my life completely <laughs> <laughs> That's my primary thing that I watch these days. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, I I kind of fell into that whole bandwagon of making bread for a little bit, but then my last bread mother died, which is the the starter. Yeah, uh, I went I went as far as buying like a Dutch oven and oh yeah, it. doing yeah, it, it right pretty, up. Yeah, right doing up. it right, and it was tasty. It was good. Uh, but I couldn't get it to a place where it was it it was tastier than stuff i make way faster with regular yeast right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah sourdough is i i do it but i've been doing it for years and even still like i have a i have maybe a 50 percent success rate with with my sourdough bread sometimes it just doesn't doesn't want to rise like it just it's so dense but if you wanted i could i could give you some of my starter sure i'd love it yeah cultivate some but yeah baking and cooking i've been doing so much oh yeah um i'm making a pie today An oh nice what pie. kind of pie apple apple pie oh this nice is a classic here's a question apple. here's a question have you ever Cheddar had cheese? the cheese on it yeah like the american style <laughs> where they put actual cheese on it, yeah. Bitch, I'm French Canadian, of course. Is that a French Canadian thing too? Yeah. How did I not know that. Yeah. And uh, sugar pie, ignorant. sugar pie is a French Canadian thing too. Have you ever had that? Sugar pie. It sounds yeah. familiar. I don't think it's so though. So sweet, so sweet and caramel. Yeah, I'll have to make it for you one day. I love that. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not. I I wish I could relate to the sports thing. I um kind of awesome once you unlock it yeah i yeah, well, it's such an interesting social tool like you you aside from enjoying the sports themselves being able to talk with other people about sports i've never i've never had that mm -hmm. and now i have it and i'm like oh this is pretty great because <laughs> like once you know the players involved you can have these interesting and in their careers you can have these interesting conversations yeah my partner is really into sports. Like we've watched, uh, we watched all of the NBA finals with the Raptors, and that was pretty easy to watch. Yeah, yeah, that I was hooked on that. The fighting sports, I can't really do. I can't. I'm not the violence and the hitting and all of that. I, I, it's too much for me. I've always liked martial arts movies, so that's been. Oh, the simulated fighting is different. I martial well, arts dance. movies are great, but yeah, it's a yeah. Dance. Um, 
I don't know why it took me so long, but I recently discovered the John Wick series and holy fuck. Oh yeah, they're great. Yeah, they're, those, those are really yeah. fun. Yeah. Have you seen um, the Eat Mon series? It's uh, Donnie Yen. Um, and I think there's five or six of them. I mean, the last one is four, but there's a prequel and then there's one that doesn't count because it's a side character. It's a spinoff. Mm-hmm. But uh, they're fantastic. They're really good. And Eat Mon was... Uh, I might be butchering how you say it, but Iman was uh, Bruce Lee's um, sensei, right? Like his teacher, his oh, spy. yeah. So he learned Wing Chun from him. So it's mostly Wing Chun, which is like very linear, interesting stuff. But they add, you know, the wire work and everything else. Yeah, flying of course. through the air, doing crazy of stuff, course. challenging other masters inside the town. You know, resolving old grudges. Super fun. I love it. I love it. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so sports, sports and yeah. cooking. Have you cooked anything interesting recently? Recently, um, yeah. I don't follow recipes. Like I, I'm an intuitive cook. Like I've made eggplant parmesan and stuff like that, but that's, that's old hat. That's like easy peasy. Mm-hmm. Um, um, not that's coming to mind, but I do make this really cool beat and, uh, Brussels sprout dish. And I, I hate Brussels sprouts. So this is, this is saying a lot. Um, I love this dish. It's, it's really simple and it's great to take to parties. All it is, is, um, you know, uh, some beets that you cut up into small pieces. <laughs> this is so specific. <laughs> and then you, uh, and half the, you, you know, obviously take the outer layers of the Brussels sprouts off and have them, but you put hoisin, um, hoisin sauce with, sesame oil, salt and pepper, mm. uh, whole garlic, just like mashed a little bit, like just crush it a little bit. Yeah. A bunch of those like little cloves all through it. Just toss it, olive oil, open face oven, 20 minutes. And it's delicious. It, wow. I never bring any home. Like if I take it places, mm-hmm. I took it places in the past. Yeah. I'm going to try that. I'm going to put it so on, on the barbecue in the uh, cast iron. Oh, I've been yeah. trying, to, trying to barbecue everything. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it's that time of year, right? Yeah. It's also just in this old house. When you turn on the oven, it stays hot forever. So, oh, I got you. Just trying to limit that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It is cool. I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're occupying your time and you're, you you seem to be doing well. You sound great. I feel great. It's, uh, I, I realized through, you know, re-realized through all this whole experience that I'm not good if I'm not doing stuff. So I need to find things to do. Mm-hmm. If I'm mm-hmm. not accomplishing things during the day, I, uh, my self-esteem goes right in the crapper. Yeah. I definitely sympathize with Which that. is where the poo from my couch should have been. Right. Misplaced, misplaced flocks of poo. Uh, trauma, oh, it's a, trauma, it's a trauma, trauma of, of diarrhea. diarrhea. <laughs> trauma of diarrhea. All right. So really glad to hear you've got your shit straight then. Thanks. Gotcha. <laughs> that was good. That was good. A little bit in there. A little. Yeah. Little well, it's always a pleasure to yeah. always a pleasure to hang out with you. Yeah, you too. Uh, All right. Well, I'm gonna go take the dog for a stroll around the block. Sounds good. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna try not to kick the cat when I get up because she's sitting at my feet right now. I have some uh, some late lunch. All right, that's our show. Thanks for listening or watching or digesting this content however you do. I don't I don't know what you damn you damn kids, your millennials and Gen Zs and your TikToks and your I, I don't know. I'm like 6500 years old. I don't understand how this all works. I'm sorry. As you can probably tell, I had a great time talking with Mike Payne. He's honestly one of the greatest people. He's super funny. Uh, You should definitely find him on social media, give him a follow, like his pages, um, and seek out his content. So I'm going to add links to the description for this podcast, and you can find him here. Also, make sure to follow Comic Sans. Check out our website, comicsansproductions.ca. So that has all the information on our upcoming shows, our content, link to our shop with merchandise. We have one t-shirt, but like it comes in four sizes and they're unisex. Um, Yeah, and keep in touch. You can subscribe to our newsletter. We're doing a ton of cool things. It looks like 
We're going into like stage three, which means we might be able to perform in a bubble. I don't know, but live shows might be coming back soon. So we're going to be doing a ton of exciting stuff. You're going to want to check that out. Thanks again for checking out our show and we'll be back next week with local Toronto comedian Luba Magnus. Uh, she is the creator of Drawn Up Comedy. She is a comedian, illustrator, super talented person. And she's going to be having a chat with me and one time co-host Marty Young. You're not going to want to miss this. Thanks so much for supporting the show and we'll see you next week.